and here it is. This is this is the mill rant. So if you're not interested in hearing me rant or whatever, you know, talk about this mill archetype, then just skip to the next video because that's all this is going to be. I don't have a particular topic to get in mind, except that I kind of just want to talk. Let's let's talk about mill. So mill is usually uh, characterized by both Emir or Emfir, however you say his dumb name. Uh, this guy, I forget what he's called, but he's eight strength dude that will gain strength every time his card is drawn by other player. And then, of course, uh, I'm blanking on his name, but the eight strength gold that draws each player two cards. So uh, those basically those three keys. If you see two out of the three of those, you can be relatively sure that you're playing against Mill. Now the problem is, uh, man, this is a very complicated topic. There's the guy, by the way. Uh, I'm not gonna talk much about my own gameplay because there's not much to see. Besides what, you know, it's, just, it's a very, it's combo hands out, you know, it's using uh, medics and it's using machines and it's using a lot of long round synergy. And also I'm luckily relatively teched against mill, as you'll see at the very end of the game. Uh, even even though I'm teched me, uh, relatively against mill, I still run out of cards and he still has like five cards left. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, so luckily I went first. So that means he's always going to be playing a card behind, which is really nice for me. And especially since he has not passed yet, which he totally could have. And I would have had to play one more card and I lose the synergy. Oh, he does pass. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's that's relatively what I would have done. Relatively speaking, whatever. I could have been a little bit more careful in making sure my point total was ahead of his and I wouldn't have to go one card down. But uh, one, I wasn't particularly thinking... I uh, wasn't particularly thinking in general because you know, I'm just kind of playing out these games, trying to learn this deck uh, and there's kind of synergies. I'm not really worried about overarching concepts all that much. Uh, but two, I wasn't thinking he was going to give up the round so easily because I expected him to try and get some of these synergies off here with these cards. Maybe he didn't have the card in his hand and he found the, a good opportunity to go for it. And he just maybe wanted to flip the coin into round two and three. But regardless, uh, I take the round, and this is pretty good for me. I do want to take the round without giving up too much of my combo, or my of my cards, whatever. That'll be the end of that. Oh, did I freeze up here? What's going on? There we go. I just didn't press pause. Dummy. Okay, so how how is, why is Mill, first let's, let's understand why Mill is good. Mill is good because it punishes uh, even only moderately thinning to heavy thinning cards. Basically, if you're going up against Mill and you're using a heavy thin deck, you 100% lose. There's unless they catastrophically mess up, or you somehow like perfectly counter like their key key combo with the multiple ways of pulling off, you pretty much lose and you can just forfeit because there's literally nothing you can do. Mill will out will. <laughs> there's no strategy involved. They just they play more cards and playing more cards usually equates to. Uh, having more strength uh now it, it kind of gets a little bit uh more in a gray area when you have only moderate thin to limited to no thin and then you start to be able to beat mill when you have more cards in your deck when you start running you know uh even just like this 27 card deck that i was running that had uh like neneke um was uh, a pretty good matchup against him even with some pretty good counters on his end and uh it gets better and better once you say you go up to like 37 card decks uh, then the tables kind of switch. Then they the mill deck doesn't really have a whole lot of power to compete with that. They have they they have a lot of their power in just playing more cards and not necessarily in pulling off strong combos like a thirty seven card deck might, or just in general like uh, if you're playing uh, I believe Super JJ prepared for a tournament uh, tournament by not banning mill or the leader uh, whichever and teching his deck so they had more cards in them. It made him less consistent, but at the same time, he was able to go up against Mill a little bit. Or I was going to say, he would have been able to go up against Mill a little bit better, but I think he got knocked out before he was able to really go up against that. Which is kind of unfortunate, because I think that kind of tournament that kind of tournament uh, strategizing is really cool. And it, it just it didn't really work out for him in that particular instance. But I don't think it's a bad idea. But anyway, back to this game. So uh, there's really, there's nothing to it, right? I'm just sitting here... In this casual match, by the way, I'm just like, 
watching or reading something on the screen. I think it was on Reddit at the time. And all I'm doing is just kind of playing out my plays, just doing whatever. Because it feels almost like a coin flip to me. Uh, partly because I'm not really familiar with this matchup or mill in general. Because I don't, uh, I usually, <laughs> I usually just concede when I go up against it. Because uh, usually I'm playing uh, Hyperth Index like Dagon Consume or, you know, whatever else. Uh, I don't think Dagon is particularly hyper thin, but it's pretty thinning. Yeah, Dag Dagon's pretty thinning. Um... So I usually just concede because I know that there's literally nothing I can do and I'm, it's just a complete waste of time. But in this particular deck, I feel like I felt like I had a legitimate chance to actually win. And it is so boring. This is the my biggest argument against Mill is that it is so damn tedious and it's so boring. And you don't even know if like you have a chance to beat them unless you have your tech ex loose like extensively against them uh with like a 37 card deck because it's just like is like are my cards uh my card my card advantage strength deficit ugh, i can't even speak my card advantage deficit gonna beat his strength total in the, at the very end i'm not really sure there's not like any real strategy going on it's just the opponent just playing cards or drawing cards and drawing cards and drawing cards and i did my absolute best to try and uh one get rid of these uh these buffing guys as much as possible. I just see I kind of line them up to kill them, and I make a little bit of a mistake in setting them up. But in general, I'm trying to line those up for scorches. <sighs> I need a breather. <sighs> this deck is such a pain. And just to note, this match was 13 minutes long, almost 15 minutes from finding a game to being at the end of the game screen was about 15 minutes. No Gwent match should go for 15 minutes. That's like, that's... That's like the time you can surrender in League of Legends. And this is like, it's so hard to like really complain about this in a like legitimate fashion because it's like, oh, you know, because like chess matches, right? Which is relatively similar um, to like Gwen's kind of, you know, just strategical philosophy, relatively, relatively within its own uh, collectible card game genre. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, because like chess matches, right, and in a lot of other, uh, you know, tactical games or whatever can go on for hours and hours or, you know, just like on average, just like 45 minutes in your typical, you know, like League of, League of Legends game, Dota, uh, sometimes Hearthstone can go up to that long. Um, chess, of course, and all those other games. Uh, but in Gwent, it feels different. Like, it feels like it shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't have to spend 15 minutes in a game that I'm not even sure I'm going to win because it's not an even footing. It's... I don't, I'm not explaining it well because it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, like my my complaint seems so petty, but I'm still going to voice it anyway. And that it's that this mill is frustrating to play against. It's boring to play against because I don't think I don't believe the I don't believe it's. Oh, yeah, that was probably a tell, by the way. He was trying to use Miracle Tailstorm, um, but that was going to be too early. So he put it back. I believe I also mentioned that in the gaining knowledge versus giving you knowledge video where I said uh, you can kind of tell what your opponent's thinking by seeing what their mouse cover or mouse cursor is hovering over. But anyway, um, back to this. It's there's it's hard to say, like, it's hard to give a like a real legitimate complaint uh, because, you know, Gwent is a strategy game. There is strategic elements. And sometimes one of those elements is having a long game and playing uh, like a mill deck. So similarly in something like Hearthstone, just to keep it outside of like the chest, which is maybe a little bit too much of a leap, um, or League of Legends, which is a bit too much of a leap. Going to Hearthstone, like Hearthstone can have fatigue warrior games, like right? Like I remember um just like a week ago or so, there was a professional match that oh, by the way, this strategy is really cool of him to uh be able to line these to play the to play the rod uh, at the very end when I don't really have a counter to them. And he's able to just wipe out so many of my units. You should see how much Strength he takes out in just two of these rod tossers. <clears throat> but anyway, and I didn't have any more medics to swap him out, and it wouldn't even matter all that much anyway. Uh, he was going to wait for them to be placed at the end. If he had played them earlier, I totally would have gotten rid of it. Uh, so as you can see, we have two cards, the three cards. He played two more cards than I did. I used Commander's Horn to try and uh, let him only hit one of these four strength dudes. And I, pro I wasn't expecting the second... Uh, Rod Tarser, although I should have, and I might have been able to set it up so that I would have another unit that would only get hit by uh, it would. I would have a single lowest strength unit, but still. 
Oh, I do kind of set up in this way, but I, I don't know. Anyway. What was I even saying? Yeah, okay, so like Hearthstone can have like hour long matches. Uh, but then going to Gwent, it feels like I don't want to play that fatigue. I don't want to go to Hearthstone. I don't want to play that hour long match. Similarly, in Gwent, I don't want to play these mill games that go up to 15 minutes for absolutely nothing. And like, what's especially frustrating is that it feels like they're almost taking you hostage because it's like you don't even want to try to try and beat them if you are not confident in your just like just at the baseline level of your deck's ability to match their card advantage with your own strength advantage because it's just completely pointless. There's no like even even though I did my very best to shut down his units and to I feel generally play, you know, pretty well. Uh, he's ugh, gosh, that hurts so much. One, two, three, four, five. That's 40 points. In just that one little play. Uh, granted, that was kind of maybe kind of offset like a lot of the stuff I was doing, but <laughs> uh, and it kind of weakens my point. I, don't, I probably could have played around that better, but I don't know. I probably should have just played a medic on that row or something. Or just, I don't know. Maybe a seat support. Okay, so I do actually end up winning. What was the final strength? It was 59 to 89. Yeah. Like, and that's just, that's more a testament to the fact of how powerful my deck was in a round three, especially since I had extra cards to spare, as opposed to most decks that which very much would not. So just to, like, this is kind of like a rambly kind of complaining video with not a lot of substantiated claims or that's kind of, that's stupid to say, like without a lot of legitimate claims, I mean, substantiated, I, I've been playing a lot of uh, murder mystery stuff anyway. Uh, so one above all else, mill is boring as fuck to go up against. Nobody wants to play against mill because the games not only go long, but it's it almost feels like a coin flip in deciding whether or not you win or not. Uh, almost like a coin flip. Uh, it's almost like a like a weighted coin flip in deciding whether or not you win. It's not a 50 50 chance like a like a exact mirror matchup a slight a little bit in favor of the person going second. But it's it's like. If your if your deck is even has a moderate amount of thin and only twenty five cards, it feels like it's impossible to win. That's the second issue. First, it's boring as hell to go up against because the games are long and they're uneventful. Two, uh, because they're lacking strategic decision making. Two, <laughs> two, it feels like you can lose before the game even starts because of the nature of mill and the nature of your own deck. Now, you can totally say like, oh, well, you just need to attack against it, right? Well, you just need to place more cards in your deck. But it's kind of like that kind of interferes with why should one deck archetype ripple across the entire game in such a way that forces you to play suboptimally against literally every other single deck type. So why don't you just play more cards in your deck? Because playing more cards in your deck makes your deck less consistent. Now, true, this may this may uh, leverage your your win rate against mill a little bit better. Let's say uh, just throwing out numbers like five percent, but then you lose like one percent across every other archetype, and it ends up being like nil. Right? You just kind of even out. So that's kind of like that's part of the issue as well. Like. Mill should not be it's not a particularly like strong deck like it sure it may be tier one, but I don't think it's like. Uh, it's so complicated because it is strong and it is tough to be, but it's not strong in the conventional way. Oh, it's difficult to talk about mill, especially as someone who hasn't played a lot or seen uh, in action as much. It's a really tricky subject, isn't it? But I think my two, the two points that I was trying to get do you stand. One, I think it's, it's indisputably boring. I think that's indisputable. Not only is the game long, but there's limited st uh, strategical decision making. I think that's indisputable because uh, for the most part, the milk player is just gonna be playing out their cards as much as possible and not really interacting with your board as much. True, he did have three raw tossers. I don't know how common that is. He did have swears, and he does have some, uh, some maneuvering with whatever his name is, A-Strength Gold. Um, but for the most part, you're just more or less playing Solitaire and just beating your opponent over the head with card advantage. 
and then over into two, I don't feel like one deck archetype, one specific art de deck archetype should be so powerful that you should feel like you need to disparage yourself against literally every single other matchup just to edge your bets a little bit against Mill. I think that's relatively unacceptable. Now, uh, th this has been a pretty hot topic in the community, and even uh, Rethaz, the community manager or whatever his position is, has commented it saying it's not really an issue, but I would like to see something done. Now, uh, so one of the solutions have been has been said to add like a doom tag or a stubborn tag on this guy and that would alleviate some of the issues but i don't think that's it's not necessarily a, like one i feel like it's not necessarily enough and two um i don't know if that's really the solution that will fix it because i don't want mill to die i want mill to be around i just don't want it to be as as i guess impactful on the health of the game yeah i don't want it to be as impactful on the health of the game as it currently stands i don't want it to be oh i'm playing a moderately thinning deck against mill i 100 percent lose or uh or i'm playing a 37 card deck i 100 percent win i don't think those kind of situations should exist and you may say well it's not going to be 100 percent. it pretty much is like sure you can do some maneuvering in the mid to lower tier ranks but when you get into the higher ranks if you're going up against one of those matchups it is almost certain that that's the case unless you are very specifically teching against mill but if you're not playing if you're playing moderate thin there's no way you can tech against mill it's impossible you just you can't it's like if you go into league of legends and like you play a certain character and your opponent plays a certain character and then they play uh and then they, they get like a they get to raise their gold cap by they get two more item slots right it's like they get two more item slots uh but the thing is, in League of Legends, you can end the game before they have a chance to get to that. And Quent, there's no semblance of that. You play until they get to their two item slots. See, that's what it is. Maybe if there was a way to beat Mill before they had a chance to mill you, then maybe you could solve that problem. But if they were able to get to the point where they could mill you... But how would you do that? The only way you could do that is to effectively stop the... Uh, either, like... Comp somehow beat them in tempo by uh somehow beat their card advantage with your own card advantage which is exceptionally difficult especially if they're running something like Mario tailstorm uh, and i'm assuming you know no catastrophic mistakes or misplays and uh but otherwise like you would have to stop them from having cards being drawn but how would you do that how could you do that aside from teching against it with cards like nenike or having more cards in your deck but no but specifically stopping them from drawing cards is there a way to stop that Maybe you can introduce maybe you could introduce a card. Ah, it's difficult. I feel like the only way you could healthily healthily health healthfully? Whatever. I, the only way you could really solve the issue is to change the way fu mill fundamentally works, but I don't think that's an option, especially not in open beta. So you would have to uh, I don't know. It's too di it's too it's too difficult for me to come up uh, by myself. I don't feel like there's any good solutions out there either right now. Except to make it weaker, I think making the deck weaker as a whole is a good is a, is an okay band aid so that it will punish. I think mill should exist to punish hyper, uh, hyper thin, but it shouldn't be as powerful as it is against regular decks. I think that's kind of what I'm going for. But then again, there's still the issue if you do happen to go up against mill, it's still a long born game. So how do you deal with that? Maybe you just don't. Maybe you just have to suck it up. But then again, like we're like we are playing a game after all. That's for entertainment. And if you're like I am, just playing on the casual ladder, you don't want to go up against those kind of games that go up for uh, that go on for a long time. And you're not even you know, it's not a battle of wits. It's a battle of playing cards. So that's all I have, I have to really say on the subject. I think Mill is frustrating as hell to play against, and I almost always concede against them as possible, even if they're just playing like. Uh, sometimes I even just like can see it as soon as I see Emir, Emphir, whatever his name is, just on the off chance that they're playing Bill and I'm playing casual and I don't really care if I lose that game or whatever. It's just, Mill is, is too frustrating to play against and it kind of drives me away from the game as well. Like, I don't even want to play Mill, not only because I know I'm going to be giving my opponents a negative experience, but because it's a negative experience for me as well. I think Mill is probably the worst. It's the... <laughs> least fun archetype that has ever been in Gwent. Is that true? Relative to its 
to its its like surrounding decks and cards and all that. I think Mill is probably the least fun deck in all of Gwent. Yeah, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's an overstatement. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching me ramble with nothing going on on the screen for ten minutes. <laughs>